up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2023 hyundai palisade courtesy of travis at jack chion volvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and yes this one actually belongs to one of the salespeople there so if you end up going there go ahead and ask for travis i'm just saying it is we're in this one today because there are plenty of changes for the 2023 model year not only that you get america's best warranty being five years sixty thousand miles bumper to bumper 10 years 100 000 miles on the powertrain also you get three years or thirty six thousand miles of complimentary maintenance so that's going to save you some money there and this is an extremely popular suv right now so it's going to be competing with the kia telluride the honda pilot and the Toyota Highlander just to name a few so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are plenty of different trim levels for the 2023 palisade first one being the se starting at thirty five thousand two hundred and fifty dollars which is a twenty one hundred dollar bump from the 2022 model year actually sel for thirty eight thousand two hundred and fifty dollars xrt which is a new trim level for 2023 starting at forty thousand five hundred and fifty dollars limited for forty six eight hundred and lastly the calligraphy being the one we are in today starting at forty nine thousand two hundred dollars by the way that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive simply add nineteen hundred dollars then to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the palisade is going to be the same powering the beast is a 3.8 liter direct injected v6 putting out 291 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 262 pound feet of torque coming in at 5200 rpm power sent to the front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know as always we will be testing out those paddle shifters here in a little bit zero to 60 time coming in in an impressive 7.1 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 19 in the city 27 on the highway for the front wheel drive 19 city 25 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel gotta love the cheap stuff so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the palisade i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there's actually a circular dial located just to the right of the shift buttons and yes they are shift buttons i know it's different than most other vehicles out there so let me touch on those real quick p is for park r is for reverse n is for neutral d is for drive it's pretty simple you get used to it pretty easily but anyways back to the drive modes they will include comfort eco sport smart snow so plenty of different drive modes and they do adjust quite a a bit so things like shift points a throttle response a steering sensitivity the all-wheel drive system engagement actually when you put it in that sport driving mode it actually tightens up the side bolsters i've noticed as well that's typically something i find in like mercedes bed so love seeing it here in the palisade that is pretty cool to kind of hug you in place around the turn so big fan of that but anyways it would also mention there is a lock button right in the middle of all those drive modes that is going to be for the all-wheel drive lock so let's say it's snowing out here in pennsylvania what i typically do on my hyundai Santa Fe as I go ahead and press that button and then uh, essentially you're in full-time all-wheel drive mode then so it powers through anything let me tell you guys but anyways having now gotten all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here all right let's just go ahead and do it right here I'm gonna start in second gear here I just want to see how quickly these things are gonna react but here we go Oh, so much of a delay. All right, unfortunately, there is a delay there, though. But that's to be expected. I mean, with this transmission setup, it's not a dual clutch, so I wasn't really expecting it to be fast. But I will say one thing. When it snows out here at PA, one of the cool things about having paddle shifters on an SUV, you can actually just do a little bit of downshifting, so you can do a little bit of engine braking when you're going down a hill. So rather than hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, do a little bit of engine braking. So that's gonna assist you with braking when you're going downhill when it's snowing out, I'm just saying. But anyways, now I haven't got that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and give back full control to the Palisade. I'm just gonna hit the D button for drive that takes it out of that full manual shift mode. And by the way, it was showing the gears up there as I was shifting as well, so that's pretty cool. But let's now go ahead and do an acceleration test and let's see how zero to 60 in 7.1 seconds really feels like in the Palisade. All right, still in sport driving mode, let's kick it. Okay, <laughs> that, that actually feels good. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, that's plenty. That's definitely plenty of an acceleration to merge you onto the highway. I was talking to my sister the other day because she just actually got the brand new 2023 Palisade XRT trim level. And she said that was one thing she noticed was the acceleration was so much faster than her old Ford Edge, which I guess makes sense. But still, the acceleration is plenty quick. This thing's kind of fine, so 
definitely don't have any issues merging onto the highway, like I said. But otherwise, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so, up front, you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front discs, in the back, 12.4 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 easier stopping distance goes, it comes in at 126 feet, which is a pretty average number for the most part. Uh, some SUVs will be in the upper 130s, that's the worst. And the best SUVs, like Volvo and Mercedes Benz, are going to be in the 1 teens, like 114, 115. So, 126 is right in the middle of the pack. As far as the braking feel goes, it does tend to lean on the softer side of things, so it's definitely not a firm braking feel, but it's one of those things like I have in my Hyundai Santa Fe, you get used to it. I wouldn't have minded a bit firmer of a braking feel, honestly, but it's not bad. It's pretty average for the segment, but anyways, then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's been great actually i have no issues with the ride quality whatsoever in the palisade here so certainly absorbing pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely as far as steering feel goes it does tend to lean on the looser side of things let me go ahead and put it back in sport driving mode it's still on the looser side of things so but being honest so wouldn't mind it again if they firmed up that braking feel but that's really not what this vehicle is for it's not to kind of power through the turns on the back roads it's really just to be a comfortable driver that you haul the kids in in the pack so for that reason i don't really think people are going to care that much about the steering feel but still for me wouldn't have minded if it was a bit firmer there touching on cabin noise we're going 14 miles per hour right now and there really isn't any cabin noise coming into the cabin <laughs> but anyways at higher speeds it actually wasn't bad this year i gotta be honest i didn't really notice it that much whereas in previous years i felt like they were having some issues with cabin noise at higher speeds like 50 plus miles per hour and i've said that in my reviews of previous palisade reviews at least but this year it's really pretty good, I gotta be honest. And I think Hyundai might have touched that up a little bit. And the reason I say that is because acoustic laminated front windshield does come standard across the board. Acoustic laminated front door glass comes on the SEL trim level and up. And then if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy, you're actually gonna get acoustic laminated rear door glass. So since we have the calligraphy, we have an acoustic everything essentially. So that is definitely absorbing a lot of the wind noise. And uh, it definitely, I could tell because like I said in previous years, it was immediately eminent that that there was a ton of cab noise coming into the Palisade, but this year, it's quite good actually. It's kind of like a luxury vehicle, so I'm actually a big fan of that. They definitely improved upon that in my opinion. The touching of visibility, I actually can see great out the back right now, and the third row is up, but the cool thing about this third row headrest is they actually fold down so they don't impede your visibility if the third row is not in use. So I'm a big fan of that. They did a good job with that. Rain sensing windshield wipers are gonna come on the limited and calligraphy, and a head up display once again coming on the limited and calligraphy trim level. So essentially I am looking at right now when it comes to forward visibility, I'm looking at my speed, speed limit, and safety features projected up on my windshield here. So that is definitely going to assist with forward visibility there as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Hyundai Palisade. All right, you guys, here she is, the new 2023 Hyundai Palisade. Let me first start with what's new on the exterior for 2023. Slightly more aggressive front fascia. It's slightly been reworked, specifically the front grille is a different design. A little bit larger of a front grille, more of a square-shaped front grille as well, as opposed to a rounded off look. XRT trim offers a slightly more ground clearance up front as well than the other trim levels. It's kind of the off-road trim, I guess you could call it, if there was one for the Palisade, so did want to emphasize that as well but let me go ahead and start with where this one is made you never know where hyundai's are made because they're either made really in the u.s here at least in the u.s or they're made in korea so for this one vin number is going to start with the k so the palisade is built in south korea that is pretty cool but anyways let's go ahead and start up front let me start with the color in this one robust emerald is the color name and it is only available on the calligraphy trim level so let me actually get up a little bit closer because when the sun hits this it's actually like this really regal looking metallic color so i'm not sure if it's going to show up on camera but it does look pretty cool when the sun hits it i will say that so a big fan of this color because it's kind of darker in the shade but then it's this cool rich emerald looking color when it hits the sun so i do like that but only available on the calligraphy so led headlights do come standard on all trim levels across the board you get the automatic feature with that as well meaning when it starts to get dark at night the headlights will turn on automatically for you there automatic high beams coming standard on every single trim level across the board i always love that feature so if you have your high beams on it 
night. It senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction. It's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams there. LED accent lighting, that definitely looks good. LED daytime running lights as well. Front skid plates are actually going to come standard on all trim levels across the board as well. They're going to be finished in different colors though. So for the most part, they're going to be finished in silver, but they're going to be finished in black with the XRT and then finished in a satin chrome for the calligraphy that we have here today. And I do like kind of that satin chrome trim at the bottom portion of the uh, front lip there as well. You got some front air curtains just to the sides of the headlights there, kind of helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. And you got the adaptive cruise control sensor kind of near the very bottom here. I'm going to try to show it to you guys. That's going to be what monitors the vehicle in front of you. So that is pretty cool there as well, but very different, very unique looking front end it's really like nothing else on the road so it definitely makes a statement but that pretty much rounds out the front let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so but now making our way to the side of the palisade here roof rails are going to come standard on the sel trim level and up so that se is not going to get it finished in silver for all trim levels but the xrt obviously the xrt is going to be adding a bunch of black accents rather than the silver or satin chrome so that's pretty much the general theme there black crossbars coming with the xrt trim level in case you wanted to throw a Christmas tree up there. That is pretty cool. Rear privacy glass is going to come standard across the board. Satin chrome window surrounds coming standard across the board as well. Door handle welcome lights coming on the SEL trim level and up. I absolutely love that. Matte black side skirts are going to come on the SE and SEL trims and there's going to be a unique design of uh, black side skirts for the XRT obviously. Body colored side skirts then coming with the limited and calligraphy and that is what you guys are looking at right now and that comes with the, the body colored fender surround as well which definitely look good here body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard they will be heated they will also though be auto dimming love that dimming the high beams of the person behind you and you will get led integrated turn signals then as well and they are a very cool design to those led integrated turn signals most manufacturers will just put a single line of led lighting but it's kind of a cool c-shaped design so i like that then take a look at the wheel configuration 18 inch alloys for the se and sel 20 inch xrt exclusive wheels for the xrt trim level obviously 20 inch alloys for the limited and then 20 inch calligraphy exclusive wheels for the calligraphy trim level but that pretty much rounds out the side profile here let's now go ahead and make our way to the back and so but now since we are around to the back of this one body colored shark fin antenna found all the way to the top just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light but i will say on the calligraphy trim level that we have today there is going to be a calligraphy exclusive high mount stoplight so a little bit different of a look than the other trim level so i did want to mention that rear window wiper of course coming standard you got the palisade lettering spelled out horizontally finished in chrome back there the h-track badging that's going to be hyundai's all-wheel drive system every manufacturer names their all-wheel drive system and for hyundai and genesis for that matter it is called h-track in case you were curious silver accenting on the inside portion of those taillights i like that design element halogen bulbs for the taillights coming with the se but all other trim levels being the sel trim level and up you will get led taillights so that's going to be a little added illumination at night there silver accenting on the lower portion of that rear bumper that definitely looks quite good and then there is a single exhaust outlet with dual satin chrome tips for all trims across the board so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the Palisade, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is gonna be a hands-free power tailgate for the limited and calligraphy. That is pretty darn cool. So just kick your foot up underneath when you have the key fob in your pocket, it's gonna automatically open up for you. So I absolutely love that. There is a button on the key fob and of course the tailgate itself as well. But once opened up, when it comes to cargo capacity, I'll give you some comparisons between the competition as well here. 18 cubic feet behind that third row. With that third row folded down, it comes in at 45.8 cubic feet. And with all rows folded down, 86.4 cubic feet. So that's pretty darn good. So for comparison's sake, my personal three row Hyundai Santa Fe comes in at 80 cubic feet. So this thing is bigger than that. 87 cubic feet for the Pilot and 84.3 cubic feet for the Toyota Highlander, just to name a couple there. So it's pretty much right where it should be when it comes to the competition. So they're all pretty much the same, maybe Highlander a little bit smaller, but definitely plenty of space in this thing. Of course, there's a 60-40 split for those rear seats. Buttons in the cargo area though to fold down the, uh, the rear seats there. I was a big fan of that, at least on a calligraphy trim level. So 
I like seeing that. Grocery bag hooks can be found back there. LED cargo lining as well. There's a 12 volt power outlet. There are tie down anchors. It's actually seat belt hooks for the third row seat belts. If that third row was not in use and you just wanted to use that back there for cargo so the seat belts don't get in the way. I kind of like that. And there's actually some in floor storage as well where you could put the cargo cover, which is where it is right now. But also you could probably put an ice scraper or a tire inflator kit or whatever you want to do back there as well. So big fan of the in floor storage. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the third row legroom. 31.4 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in that third row. There are rear cup holders for those third row passengers. And really the third row I think is done better in the Palisade than any other SUV out there right now. Here's why. So you get rear ventilation that, that's found on the roof or the ceiling of this thing, I guess you could say. Third row charging ports, phone charging ports for the limited and calligraphy. So last year they were actually the USB-C. It looks like this year is the USB-A. So a little bit of difference there, but still the fact that the third row gets charging ports is pretty darn impressive, but it doesn't stop there. The third row also gets rear heated seats. So a lot of times SUVs will add rear heated seats in the second row as a, a very fancy option, but for the third row, that's kind of unheard of. So that is absolutely wonderful. So well done Hyundai for putting that back there, at least on our calligraphy trim, I'm just saying. Second row legroom coming in at 42.4 inches for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in this second row then. And of course the second row is adjustable, so you can move it forward if you have third row passengers or you can slide it back, it's up to you. Captain's chairs configuration coming with the SEL trim level and up. If you wanted bench sheeting, that comes standard on the SE. It is optional then for the SEL if you want to go that route but for the most part it's a captain's chair setup second row automatic climate control coming with the sel trim level and up so your passengers can set their own temperatures back there dual usb charging ports for all trim levels across the board heated rear seats coming on the limited and calligraphy trim levels ventilated rear seats as well that's insane coming on the limited and calligraphy trim levels as well 115 volt power outlet for the limited and calligraphy 12 volt power outlet as well and rear window sunshades for the limited and calligraphy so if you really wanted to spoil the rear passengers essentially what i'm saying is the limited and calligraphy trim levels are definitely where it's at and there's these cool little netted side pockets on the inside portion of those rear seats as well so that's not something you typically see and as far as the rear charging ports you might miss this because a lot of times they're found just below kind of the center climate control settings and all that but in this case they're actually found on the side of the front seats and then you could put the actual phone on the uh, the seatbelt map pockets, I guess you could say, because a lot of times if you put them in the middle, they'll get tripped on with third row passengers. So Hyundai thought of this idea to put them on the side of the back of the front seats, whereas they're not in the way for third row passengers to crawl at the middle back here to get to the third row. So I like that idea as well. But then make your way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating for the SE trim level. SEL and XRT is going to add to that high text trim seats, eight way power driver seat with two way power lumbar and heated front seats then as well. Limited trim level is going to add to that leather seating, four way power lumbar, a thigh cushion extension for the driver, ventilated front seats and the memory settings. And then the calligraphy is going to add to that premium Napa leather and that ergo motion driver seat meaning you put it in that sport driving mode and the side bolsters are going to tighten up a little bit just like mercedes-benz does in their g-wagon so yeah you got the same feature in the palisade as a 200 plus thousand dollar g-wagon that is pretty darn cool so overall needless to say in our calligraphy specifically with the four-way power lumbar adjustment with the ergo motion driver seat seating was plenty comfortable you're not going to have any issues with taking this thing on the long road trip then taking a look at the steering wheel it is of course tilt and telescope being a telescoped out plenty far for me. It is leather wrapped for the SEL trim level and up. It is a two-toned leather wrapped for the calligraphy, although you can see where it would be two-toned, kind of like Volvo tends to do, but it's not two-toned in our particular spec. It's just all black. It's an all black interior here, but anyways, it could be two-toned if you wanted it. Heated steering wheel coming then with the limited and calligraphy as well. But then take a look at the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side, all of your buttons found on the other side of the key. Lock, unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate. The hold button's gonna be a remote start and the two P buttons with the vehicle picture, that's gonna be your smart pack. So essentially, if you're parked in a spot that's a little bit too close for the kids to get into the uh, the rear doors there without slamming it into the vehicle beside you, you can go ahead and make sure the vehicle's locked, push the remote start, then go ahead and use that smart pack to go ahead and pull the vehicle out so your kids can get in without smacking the vehicle beside you. So 
that's pretty cool. And it is a keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels. And you do get a digital key as well for the SEL trim level end up that you can use your phone essentially to start this one up and get in and out without having to use the keys. But I'm just going to put my phone on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of the air vent there. And so once started up, analog gauges with a 4.2 inch screen is going to come with the SE, SEL, and XRT trim levels. However, if you were to go with a limited or calligraphy, you're going to get what you're currently looking at right now, which is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and these gauges are slightly different than the previous year actually so they're a little bit reworked as well and that's the cool thing about digital gauges i would imagine it's just a software update that can completely change the look for the next model year so i don't think they had to do too much to switch that up but i do like it it looks very good a nice calming look to it and there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel that allows you to adjust between a bunch of different things there's outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty speedometers on the left tachometers on your right and uh you know what i just noticed the the tachometer no longer spins backwards that I'm used to seeing at least it actually spins in a clockwise motion now whereas in previous years it was a counterclockwise motion so that is interesting that they switched that up I guess they obviously watched my video and then they were like you know what we are doing this really different why don't we switch I don't know I didn't mind it before I'm just saying anyways then touching on overall interior quality there is a conventional sunroof for the XRT there is dual panel sunroof then for the limited and calligraphy so rear passengers have their own sunroof back there as well LED interior interior lighting for the SEL trim level and up. You got the school bus style mirror so you could spy on the rear passengers if you like. That's fun. Cloth headliner coming with the SE, SEL, and XRT trim levels. Melange headliner for the limited. I showed that in last year's review. I did the limited there. And then you got this microfiber headliner for the calligraphy. And yes, it feels like microfiber just like the cloth that you would clean your vehicle with. So it's exactly like that. It's pretty cool. 64 colors of ambient lighting coming with the calligraphy trim level only. Love of the ambient lighting in this thing but last year they put it on the limited as well so hyundai put it back on the limited come on because the ambient lighting really is pretty darn cool there's so many different color options auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls for the sel trim level and up dual zoom climate control for the sel trim level and up wireless phone charger for the sel trim level and up quilted leather door panels for the calligraphy fancy man i like that but the best thing about hyundai really in general with all of their vehicles is they tend to not overlook the details so for example on the when the power window buttons most of the manufacturers in its class will leave them kind of like a matte black plastic but with hyundai yes they're still plastic but they finish them in a nice silver color along with the actual surrounds to these window buttons they finished it in a silver design which is also found around the shift buttons and the drive mode buttons and all that fun stuff as well so i like the attention to detail that they put even on the vents themselves they're a nice texturized finish to them so like that as well you got some cool hidden storage found just underneath of all the shift buttons so perhaps girls could have their purse down there or something like that if you wanted to there are dual cup holders and the cool part about those cup holders is that they actually fold away if they were not in use and then you just simply press a button and they slide open immediately so that is pretty cool as well there is a wireless phone charger down there and travis's business card in case you were interested and then within the center armrest there's actually a ton of storage in here and there's a couple bucks as well so honestly overall the interior quality especially for its class it does not get any better than this i would dare say this is the best interior quality without a doubt in its class. What other SUVs in its class do you know that have this microfiber headliner or all of the little attention to details that the Palisade has? I'm just saying. But anyways, now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen because again, this is new for 2023. 12.3 inch color touchscreen display coming standard for every single trim level across the board. I love that because last year when I reviewed the 2022 Palisade, it was an eight inch screen, I believe, for the SE and SEL. And then I think it was a 10 and a quarter inch screen for the remainder of the trim levels. So 12.3 inches now for every single trim level. So maybe that's part of the reason why the price went up as well. So ton of new tech for this one. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. Factory navigation system, standard for every single trim level across the board. Gotta love that. You check out your climate control settings up there. There is a voice memo system, so you can record your voice and then play it back at a later date if you do not want to forget something. That's pretty cool. There's also uh, your ambient lighting settings up there. You can adjust the colors, of course. There's a passenger talk system, which essentially projects your voice into the rear seat so the kids can better hear you yelling at them. There's quiet mode, so if your kids are sleeping on a long road trip in the back, it completely eliminates the speed 
speakers, the rear speakers, but limits them to like seven or eight in the front so you don't wake them up. So that is pretty cool as well. There is no more sounds of nature apparently, and that's fine. I don't, don't imagine many people probably use that. Of course, you can check out your radio information up there though. Six speakers coming with the SE, SEL, and XRT trim levels, and then a 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system coming with the limited and the calligraphy, and that is the one that we have today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Honestly, it's not bad. You know what though? I felt a lot of bass coming right around the feet area here. So obviously there's some kind of a subwoofer down there. So it was kind of like massaging my feet. So if you have feet issues, maybe this is the SUV for you. But anyways, sound system was plenty fine. I remember testing it out last year. It was amazing last year too. So no issues with that whatsoever. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put this thing in reverse, it will give you a rear view camera. It will also beep if you get too close to an object like it is doing for me right now. But you also get that surround view monitor if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy trim level there on the right, giving you that bird's eye view, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me start with IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. Front side, side current airbags do come standard, driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. But then also coming standard, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, forward collision avoidance assist with car, pedestrian, and cyclist detection, lane following assist, lane keep assist, driver attention warning system, safe exit assist, rear parking sensors, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which works brilliantly on the Palisade, and then highway driving assist as well. And then if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy that adds to that front parking sensors, highway driving assist too, and a blind spot view monitor that shows up on the gauges as well, which is freaking cool. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here, the Palisade, excellent safety digital gauges are wonderful ambient lighting is amazing interior quality is second to none in its class it really is the best interior quality you can get right now sound system is plenty good this is a great value when consider you also get america's best warranty and three years of complimentary maintenance as well really with the calligraphy trim level that we have today i i can't think of anything bad usually i got constructive criticism for everything but if i didn't mention it in the video already i really don't have anything so anyways let me know what you guys think of the palisade in the comment section below and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold